The Razer Nari is a gaming headset which can be used both wirelessly or in wired mode, and even has RGB lighting. In this review, I'll let you know how it is to use and listen to for long periods of time, and let you listen to the microphone quality to help you decide if they're worth buying. The Razer Nari headset is completely black, with fairly large ear cups and of course RGB lighting while powered on. Inside the box you get the headset itself, 3.5mm audio cable, USB Type-A to micro USB cable for charging, and an instruction booklet. Both of the cables were braided and felt nice. The 3.5mm cable can simply be plugged into the headset and then whatever you want to connect them to. And this works without the headset needing to be on, so you can still use it this way if the battery's dead. That's where the micro USB cable comes in. It's used to charge the headset and plugs in just above the 3.5mm input on the left ear cup. I found it to take around 2.5 hours to fully charge from being dead, and I was able to use it for approximately 15 hours on a single charge with the RGB lighting on. And when it gets low, it'll beep to let you know. Raise a note that you'll get up to 14 hours with chroma lighting enabled, or 20 hours with the lighting disabled. But you can still use it while charging. You'll just need the charging cable, though the audio will still be wireless. Just above the micro USB port is the power button, used to turn them on and off. But you only need this if you want to use them in wireless mode, or if you want the RGB lighting, as this won't turn on just from connecting the 3.5mm audio cable. To use them in Wi-Fi mode, there's a small USB dongle found inside the right ear cup. Just push it in and then pull it out. I liked this design as it prevents you from losing the USB dongle, although it would have been nice to just be able to use them over Bluetooth. Razer note that you can get up to 12 meters of wireless range, and this is about what I got with line of sight, though expect less with solid objects in the way like walls. After connecting the USB dongle to my computer, it automatically prompted me to install the necessary Razer Signup software to manage the headset, and most importantly, customize the RGB lighting. You can apparently plug the USB dongle into a PS4 too. You just aren't able to customize the lighting, but I haven't tested that, and no mention of other consoles. Once you've got the Razer Signup software set up, you can view the battery charge level, calibrate directional sound with THX spatial audio, adjust bass levels and EQ, change microphone volume and sensitivity, customize the brightness and colors of the lighting through Razer Chroma, and change how long before they turn off from inactivity, the default being 15 minutes. You can customize the colors using Razer's Chroma software, so if you've got other Razer products, you can sync everything up. But what I found interesting is if you've got Philips Hue, you can also control them through the Hue app. At first I was concerned about the extra battery drain from having the RGB lighting, but I was still able to use the headset for over 15 hours on one charge. Just above the USB dongle is a volume dial, so you can easily lower or raise the volume of the headset. On the other side there's another dial for adjusting game and chat sounds, allowing you to increase or reduce audio preference to chat or game sounds. Finally, above the game chat balance dial is a button to quickly mute the microphone, the microphone is found on the left and can be pulled out and bent to whatever angle you need. When you're not using it, you can simply push it back into the ear cup to keep it out of the way. The end of the microphone lights up red when it's muted, so you can visually tell quickly if you need to unmute, as it can be seen while extended. Here's a quick demonstration of the microphone quality to give you an idea of what to expect. Overall, the quality wasn't amazing, which seems to be pretty common with gaming headsets. Definitely usable, just not impressive considering the price point. Razer note that the cushions are cooling gel infused, and I can't say that I noticed my ears heat up after hours of use, but I don't think I usually ever have that problem either with other headsets anyway. After a 10 hour straight session of use while editing videos and listening to music, I didn't have any problems at all. My ears weren't sore and they still felt comfortable. But that will probably vary between people, as we've all got different ear and head shapes. There's also padding along the top band, which further rated in overall comfort. And this auto adjusts, so there's no need to set the length. The ear cups can also swivel inwards by around this much, which I found useful for resting them around my neck. I did occasionally press a bunch of buttons when taking them off and putting them on, but I guess there's not much you can do about that if you're going to have buttons on the ear cups. So we've come all this way and haven't even discussed how they actually sound. Here are the technical specs for the Razer Nari headset, and from someone who is by no means an audiophile, I thought they sounded really good. 
I normally use my Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones day to day, and to me these were pretty equal in terms of quality, but with more bass. Which is probably expected, as the M50X are known for producing a clean sound. For up to date pricing, check the links in the video description, as prices will change over time. At the time of recording, here in Australia they're going for around 250 Australian dollars, or 150 US dollars for my international viewers. And they come with a 2 year warranty. Not exactly cheap, they cost more than my Audio Technica ATH M50X, but in my opinion, they do also sound better and have the advantage of being wireless. You've also got the option of the more expensive Razer Nari Ultimate for $50 US dollars more, or the Nari Essential for around $50 less. Again, there are links in the description and you can use Razer's website to compare the differences. Overall, I found the Razer Nari to be a pretty good headset. I thought the sound quality was excellent, even in wireless mode. They were perfectly comfortable for me even after 10 hours of non-stop use. And of course, you've got RGB lighting if you prefer to reduce your running time on a single battery charge by 6 hours. They both look and feel great, granted that will be objective, though they seem to be made from good materials. The only downsides I had during my testing was the microphone quality not being as good as I'd hope considering the price. The overall size of the ear cups are quite large, and you've got to be a little careful taking them off to avoid mashing a bunch of buttons with your thumbs. Let me know what you guys thought of the Razer Nari gaming headset down in the comments. And of course, get subscribed if you want to see future tech videos like this one.